Hi, I'm Shane from the Big Chair Interviews. Enjoy. Um, my name is Domingos Lamoglia. I'm from Brazil. I uh, live in America for 27 years. Been involved with the BMX for 38 years. And been uh, coaching as a level, high performance, uh, a couple of years already. Um, so, how did you get involved in BMX in Brazil? Oh, actually, actually, uh, I was a soccer player, and that was pretty good. Play for a good team as a national team as well, and then uh, I was I was not. It was hard for me to want to win every single time, and I can see the other. The teammates not They're letting you down yeah, yeah. and then uh, I was just getting trouble for that because I was fighting with my <laughs> teammates and co coaching as well and uh, one of those days I was I was walking back home and, and I saw a guy jump some plywood ramp I just stopped by talked to that guy and like it and it's like yeah just go to the next track and and it's just falling off for that. The first time I went in and quit play soccer, started to race BMX. So how old were you when you were introduced into BMX? It was 13, 14. Okay. Yeah, something like that. So pretty late bloomer? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, because I had a, I really had a talent to play, to play soccer. I think most of Brazilian people yeah. born with that. But, uh, it was not for me to be a teammate. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was getting in trouble. <laughs> um, so, how is uh, racing in Brazil? Is it easy to get into? Are there lots of tracks? In Sao Paulo, yeah. In Sao Paulo, it's pretty easy to get involved with the BMX. There's a lot of, a lot of you know, Sao Paulo is a big city. There are a lot of small towns that they had a local track. It's pretty, pretty easy to be involved. And, and St. Paul is the big state as uh, state championships. And they run pretty good. Uh, so, you know, I mean, uh, not as a high performance, but uh, they run pretty good. There's, they have some good tracks. Not enough for the big country in this. Not even supercross track, you know. Not one supercross track in all of I mean, they had the Olympic track and they have a one uh, far from everybody. I think it's in Curitiba, something like that. But it's far. It's so far from everybody. It doesn't make any sense. So, so the Rio track doesn't exist anymore? Doesn't it? It's there. Oh, right. It's there, but. Wow. A band. Just to give it away. So, do you think. Um, with the Olympics being held in Rio, um, it's easier to access BMX as a sport now than it would have been when you started? It doesn't change. All oh, right. I think, I think before it was better. Oh, okay. In the 90s, in the 90s there, was a, there was a good, good time. That, that was one of the reasons I was living doing BMX 89, all the way to 91. And then they had a new government and just took the money away from everything and, and there was everything went down. That was the reason I decided to I have to do something in my life. You know, I was getting close to and the college to do something and then I decided to had the World Championship in America in 1994 and decided to go and I went to and I went back home but I come back to Alaska as a traditional race. I was back in the NBL. Yeah. So been 27 years. So when you raced that World Championship in 94 were you pro or amateur? No, I was I actually was racing super class. Oh yeah. Remember they had a uh, super class and pro and elite. At a, like, yeah, at a yeah. level it was almost like a B pro. Yeah, yeah. And it was a super class. Yeah, yeah. Super class. Yeah. I was racing super class that time. So what age did you say, okay, uh, I want to 
ride pro and decide to, to do the supercars, what, what age would you have been? Oh, okay. And um, you moved to America. Were you racing pro in America? Were you? Um... Yeah, moving to America. I uh, went there, uh, started race. Uh, they had the A Pro and yeah. Double A Pro. Uh, oh no, I actually when I when I went to the Christmas class, A Pro was a super class. Oh, right. And then uh, they had a uh, Pro. Yeah, yeah. NBA. Yeah. And ABA called Super Class April. Oh, right. And Double A Pro yeah. as a yeah. elite. Uh, I mean, I, I always say uh, Super Class. And um, you've had a long and uh, pretty rewarding career as a Fit Pro as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I had much. I tried to race a league. I got. Uh, was, was not bad enough. I was fast, but not uh, not a skill level. I need uh, to work a lot. To, I don't have a coach at that time as well, and then uh, race for April for a long time. And when I was 34, I turned back, and actually started to get better. <laughs> and I had a great, I had a CC as a Vepro. I mean, I raced Vepro all the way to 49 years old. All right. I mean, all the way to 50, actually. Um, and my last podium was 49 in Minnesota. As a Vepro. As a Vepro. Wow. It was uh, Taylor Brown first, Christian got second, I got third. Yeah. And now you're, you're still riding? I still ride. But not Vepro? No, not that anymore. Um, because as a coaching, and to go to those national races with a bunch of league riders, junior riders, Take me, take, take, take me to it. Because okay. I'm gonna, I don't, I can't do half half. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. do 100%, and I think the riders deserve much more. Yeah. Than I, I'll probably race for a long time. And I still, I still can ride anytime. And I think my job is to help those guys now to be a better athlete. I'm, they're having to see careers. Uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I mean, blast. How long have you been coaching for? I've been coached for a long time, but uh, for uh, as I lead, coaching, I would say the last four years, I've been coaching good riders. Full time for the last two years for sure. Alright, oh, that's your full time job now. Full time job. Oh right. For the last two years. So um is it um three years. Three. Yeah, yeah. Do you find it more rewarding to um, see the results of the riders you coach than some of your own results? Yeah, it's it's different, you know. It's something you build, you have it, and you see some talent. You know, Pretty much. I think the experience makes some difference. I was just talking to Sean today. Long time experience makes the difference. And then you know, for the last for the last two years, all my athletes has been I've been proud of those guys. You know, world number three, national champions, uh, junior champions as well, so it's, 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 it's a great feeling as well, like they win, but I, I win as well, yeah. I won too, you know what I mean? Do you um, see any irony in uh, the fact that you stopped playing soccer because it was a, a team sport, but now you're, you're a team with your riders, um, there's a, 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 maybe the fact that you've matured a bit more, you're able to work with people better? Um, oh yeah, for sure. Uh, that's what uh, I don't have back in the day. Somebody to tell me how to think things and how, why to be better, make you better athlete, why to sleep early, make you better athlete, make you do well at the racing level. Uh, 
so much and uh, my wife's like I can take her to the tracks and please don't 
<laughs> and then she just lost the interest. And then when when Anderson started to, to live with me, she get into and actually there turned his boyfriend. Oh right. Yeah. It wasn't a contract, you know. He owed me some money. But uh, it is what it is. And she just ride a track for fun. Yeah. She don't wanna do, she just wanna be with us. Yeah. And so actually she's going to the, the college now and to do a physiotherapy. Oh, right. She's trying to she be part of the coaching too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So So how does the um the tent area work out now. I've noticed that it's not just country um, teams anymore. There seems to be a lot of teams kind of like you where you've pulled in different riders from different countries. Do you have your own allocated tent space for your riders or do you have to sort of jump between each country's tent? Yeah, I have it here. Oh, right. To go to the Fiji country. It doesn't matter. It's part of my job. And that's how I think uh, people from outside don't understand what coaches do. We have to, you know, get a video, talk to this every single day, talk to you know, the aspect to ride the track, take the lines, and that's that's part of the, the program. Not just send the program, do sprints, squats, go to the gym, and go to the track. You know, it's it's day by day, and you know, try to you know, make those guys better. That's why I'm just great athletes to see as well. Um. As a rider, um, would you prefer to be in the gym trying to work on your strength or on the bike having a bit of fun, uh, maybe working on skills? What was your preference? I like both. Oh, really? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I like to go to the gym. I like to ride my bike a lot. I went to the pop track. Oh, right. I stay out. Uh, I need No, I think uh, for the athletes, everything has to be so much specific, you know, some athletes need more track time, some athletes need more gym time, and, you know, some athletes need more spinning time, and, so, uh, myself, uh, I like it, I like it. So, um, you're obviously on the road a fair bit, uh, not only with the UCI um, Supercross World Cup Series, but domestically in the States. Um, would you prefer to do that as a rider or as a coach? Or, I think before you said it was just as rewarding, but um, do you find it easier if you were just looking after yourself or if you're looking after riders as well? I think, look, I prefer it was, I wish I could be after for a <laughs> Australia for a little while now, haven't you? A couple of weeks? Yeah, three, three weeks. This isn't your first trip, is it? Because I remember we raced against each other in Adelaide in Vet Pro. Yeah, I know, this third. third. 2003 as well. So, do you enjoy the country? I love this country. I really do, actually. Um, when, uh, 2009, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was uh, Adelaide. Adelaide? Sorry, Rose Adelaide, Rose. yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> what the coach's duties on a day-to-day -day basis while you're at the Supercross events? Uh, for myself? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what would you do, for, say, for Anderson on a um, on a daily? Like, do you, are you his alarm clock to get him out of bed and say, okay, here's your food? Oh no, he has, you know. Every single athlete has to have his own routine. You know, yeah, we, we live it together, so that makes it easier, for sure. To know he's been doing everything, even we, I have my own gym at home. I have everything at home, everything. Even all my time in the day, so it makes it a lot easier. 
and also my athletes sometimes just stay there and I have an extra room for that. But that's it's every day. It's every day. It has to wake up and override and first session, rest, eat properly, and the second session. It's like a job, but it's different with teams. You take a little break here and there. But uh, it's Monday to Monday. Even with over day, it's something. Over activity. So you've um, uh, seen the change between having a single round at a Supercross event to back-to-back -back rounds on the weekend. Um, is there anything different about what the rider might do, say, on a Saturday after racing? that will allow them to be ready for racing on Sunday? Um, or is it pretty much just exactly the same? Depends how the day goes. Okay, so it's going all the way then well. You might rest a little bit. If you have a good day, you will race maybe two motors. You do a little longer recover or extra two or three sprints to make sure your legs will be good for the next day. That's what I yeah. It depends the depends the first thing. And then we make change for the next day. And usually same. Um Bathurst has been a very different track for a lot of VCI uh, World Cup tracks. It's downhill super fast, obviously a bit windy. Um, how do you prepare a rider for a track that's that different? Oh, actually, we just noticed when we got here, even we had a bunch of videos and people, they were telling us as well. I mean, they're ready, you know, to race supercross. But uh, when you got time to go to the track, you, you make a bit just pretty quick. And actually, it's really big track, big jumps as well. And there's, of course, they're racing big jumps, but. Uh, that's the track that's bigger. But, uh, you know, a couple laps, they get used to. Yeah. And then you can go. Did you find that you had to change any gearing or anything to allow for the extra speed? No. No. Because, uh, it's more, I think it's more a riding feeling, iffy feeling. Sometimes we have it with cheese, but uh, super gross, big meter heels. all I've got for you as far as questions. Um, thanks very much for joining us. Um, and is there anyone you want to thank for you know, bringing you out here to Australia? Uh, first, thank you guys for having me. It's a pleasure to come in, of course, and be racing to you back in the day. That's pretty good as well. Um, my family, you know, that's, I think that that's my, my best support to be in the sport for so long. Just to see. As I have been a coach, all my athletes, that's all, all the athletes as well here, all the coaches, my clients, all over the world. That's what I love so much. I mean, actually, took me to all over the world and met people everywhere and different countries. And we have us, of course, all my sponsors, you know, for so long. I mean, represent profile more than 20 years. Oh, and, really? Yeah. And GNR Vice, because I think it's my mentor and supporters. So, so, I've in America. Give me a chance to make my life better as well. So, for me, it's to today. This company is being so, so, so. Alright, thanks very much. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you for watching the Big Chair interviews. I hope you enjoyed it. To stay up to date, please tune into our YouTube channels of ECI Imports or BMXUltra.com. Thank you very much.